If we can start, please, a uh, question to both of you regarding Honda. Please, can we get your reaction to the news that they're going to be pulling out of Formula One at the end of next year? Max, could we start with you, please? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's a shame, uh, but yeah, you have to understand them, you know, the reasons. And uh, yeah, we just, uh, you know, we just keep on pushing. That's also what they said. Of course, they're going to pull out, but they are not, um, you know, just going to back off now. You know, we just keep working together because we have a great relationship. So uh, it's really enjoyable to work with the guys. Um, so for the rest of the year, we just keep on going, and also for next year, introducing the new engine. Uh, you know, I'm very much looking forward to that as well. You know, to just bring it to a to a good end and, and basically push until the last race. How much of a surprise was their decision? I mean, you could feel it coming. Of course, you don't show it, but uh, of course, I also knew it a little bit earlier than the announcement. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's just a, a shame, but understandable from from their side. Thank you, Alex. Please. Yeah, I mean, same as what Max said. I think uh, yeah, we know the guys there. Super cool guys. Very passionate, um, and it is a big shame. Obviously, we still have a year and a half with them, so it's still not over. We're going to be yeah, and I, I know them and. They're not going to go out without a fight, so it's going to be, uh, yeah, just kind of nothing will change on our side, um, obviously, until until that moment happens. But uh, yeah, it's a, it is a shame, but um, just got to keep working and uh, put it behind us. Mercedes announced this morning, this afternoon, as I'm sure you know, that one of your team members has tested positive for coronavirus. How concerning is that for you as you bid for this seventh title? And um, does it have any f a material effect on the running of the team over the weekend? Naturally, it's it's, uh, it's sad to hear that for for you know the guys that work so hard. We obviously had this this uh, week in between, and those guys work so hard to to stay safe and uh, and, and be here on the weekend. So it's definitely. Um, concern. It's obviously important for everyone around the world to know that, to, to be continuously reminded that this thing has not disappeared, it's still here. We still need to continue to follow protocols and wear masks and keep our hands clean, keep our distances. Um, I can't say what it's going to do to the, to the weekend. Uh, we have a lot of great people within our, within our, within our team, it's not just about one person. So. Um, we're trying to uh, make him proud this weekend and um, we, it's just going to take a different type of work. Uh, well, it's going to take a lot of work to still to make sure that we, we continue on without any disturbances. I just wondered um, for both drivers what protocols are in place. Um, is there a fear we've seen before with Sergio Perez testing positive, missing two races? It can obviously have a, a big, big impact on the, on the rest of the season. Is there a concern that could lose your, your, your standing in the championship as a result of testing positive. Valtteri, can we start with you, please? I think for sure, as a, as a driver, uh, the last thing you, you want is, is to get it. Uh, you know, it, it would definitely mean at least missing one race, maybe even more. So, and we had one example of that already. So, of course, being as cautious as you, as you can, and uh, you know, following the protocols, and you know, try to be sensible and. You know, stay stay in, in, in the bubble. So, Joe, could you just update us on the latest on your your future? Um, are you still in talks with uh, with any or multiple Formula One parties? And do you think that it's worth trying to um, to convince Red Bull to look outside their driver driver pool and take a punt on you? Is you're available? Uh, well, at the moment there is no nothing to report. Nothing has been signed. Uh, there has been some some progress but uh, um, I think it's still it's uh, it's going to take a, a bit more more time and I think in Formula One until you don't have anything signed uh, it's everything in the air so nothing really to, to say. On the, the Red Bull question? What was the Red Bull one? Do you think it's worth chatting to them telling them that you're available and <laughs> do you think there's an opening? Well, there? I'm sure they know uh, so um, yeah, as I say, you know, uh, right now it's just a matter of uh, keep 
uh, all the doors open and, and, and um, be patient as well. I'm in no hurry. So let's see what comes up in, in, in the next couple of weeks. Lance, as a former rival of Luca Kuberi, what is your opinion of his behavior during last weekend's World Karting Championship round? And how do you think the FIA should respond to what happened? I think he was completely out of line. Um, behavior like that can't, can't be tolerated in our sport. Um, it shows a bad example to the young generation. And we fight so hard on track. Um, you know, there's just no need for violence off the track. Um, that's how I see it. And, um, you know, I, I, I believe the FIA are going to handle it um, as they should. Um, you know, and, 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 and something like that needs to be um, heavily addressed and there needs to be a severe penalty um, for his actions. Can we get your reaction to the news that Honda are pulling out of Formula One at the end of next season? Pierre, could we start with you, please? Yeah, um, yeah I must say, personally, I was quite sad um, when I, I got to know the news. Um, no, I've had a pretty long relationship with them starting starting in 2017 in Super Formula and yeah I really enjoyed um, and I'm still enjoying working with with these guys you know they are really dedicated uh, committed, committed and when they have a target in mind they, they, they work so hard um, till they achieve it. I can only wish them uh, the best they, they know best what's for their uh, future, what's best for the future, and uh, of course I will always have great memories and uh, I'm quite proud to have uh, been part of, of their Formula One journey. Kimmy, I think we'll start with you. You are a record breaker this weekend. Start number 323. Would 21-year-old Kimmy have believed that 40-year-old Kimmy would still be racing in Formula One now? Definitely not, but then I didn't have really much plans for, for I never had very much long, let's say longer plans, so you know, it's just how it has worked out and uh, we'll see, maybe we get it, maybe not, you never know what happens. So. And Antonio, can we just have a word from you on what it's been like to be alongside Kimi, what you've learned from him? You know, of course, uh, I think uh, he, he parts of uh, history, you know, Formula One, uh, Kimi, uh, not just because he did the most of uh, Grand Prix in Formula One, but, you know, he won a, a championship and uh, still, I think, one of the driver most support from uh, from fans. And for me, you know, uh, since I, I, I signed that uh, and I knew that I was uh, be uh, the teammate of Kimi, you know, for me, I'm just really proud to be his teammate, maybe the last one we don't know, but uh, you know, I just for me is uh, like I say many times, it was a, a big help for me to start uh, my career in Formula One. Beside him, I've done a lot of, of things to to him. Still, uh, still a lot motivated, still a lot fast, and uh, so yeah, just uh, really great to to be his teammate, and uh, hopefully I can still uh, learn a lot of things from him. There's a couple of news stories out there today that. You took up an option for next year at the end of last month. Um, is that not the case, or, or, or is that true? If you believe the news, maybe then it's the truth. But uh, I never had an option in my contract, so that should pretty much tell you that it's, it's not true. And uh, you know, I read so many things on the news in over the years that uh, I stopped reading them because it's maybe 90% is is uh, far from truth and then 10 percent is something to do with it so um no i haven't i haven't signed anything i didn't sign last week or month ago or, or yesterday or today so we'll, we'll see you've got mick schumacher alongside you in fp1 tomorrow can you just tell us a little bit about your relationship with mick how well do you know him what are you expecting from him tomorrow um, yeah, obviously I don't know him that well. We spoke in some years back already, and uh, he's a great guy. You know, it's a copy of his father in many ways, and uh, yeah, it's great to great to see him. I think it's nice that he's been in the car tomorrow. Obviously, he's same for Antonio, but uh, you know, it's FP1, and uh, hopefully the weather can be kind of okay so we get 
let's say, normal running and it is miserable like today, it's not going to be that much fun. But uh, yeah, I think it's great to see him doing his first FP1 and uh, especially, especially with us. The team brought some updates to Russia. We've been told more is coming here to Germany this weekend. Can you just tell us about the improvements that have been made to the car this season? Um, we've brought very small upgrades um, for, for here too, but uh, probably a bit more significant than the last uh, race. Uh, but uh, we've tried to do the best uh, we could do um, with, the, with the difficulties we are in at the moment. Uh, so it's not being... Uh, easy. Uh, we've tried to first analyze what was wrong on the car to then address those issues and that's what we are doing at the moment. Um, these are small steps but it's going in the right direction. SIP tire management in hot conditions is not uncommon in Grand Prix racing but how do you deal with temperatures too low? Well it depends how much choice you have. Obviously uh, it is quite cold here. We're expecting something like 10 degrees for the next days. Um, I think first of all we need to ask, answer the question whether it's going to be wet or dry. <laughs> I think we'll see what we find tomorrow and the next couple of days. But yeah, uh, tyre temperature will be key uh, to the performance, to unlock, unlock your performance this weekend. So uh, I think uh, we are trying to be as prepared as we can, but ultimately you find out when, uh, when you hit the track how good or how bad you, you're off and then you, you try to take it from, or tackle it from there. Could we just get your thoughts now on the track you're going to be driving on this weekend and any previous experiences you've had here, Esteban? Could we start with you, please? Yeah, I had a couple of experience in, uh, in my junior categories. Um, Formula Renault was, was one of them. Then I raced in, in Formula 3, uh, got a podium uh, in here. Um, it's more of a normal track, let's say, compared to... Uh, Mugello or Portimao, uh, so it's something that's going to be a bit more straightforward. Um, you know, teams have experience here, they already came, so it's going to be a bit easier for, for them to, to have knowledge and, and data uh, to, to arrive more ready here in the weekend. Um, but it still has some great challenges and some opportunities to, to race well as well. Um, turn 1 is a good overtaking spot, uh, the chicane turn 13 is going to be a, also a good one. Um, it's an old school circuit with some great curbs, some, some curbs that we don't usually see in the season. So, um, yeah, I like that. I think it, it, yeah, there's no room for error and that's, that's a cool thing. You've had experience at Ripple of being uh, a customer team with Renault and then you now had experience being the works team at Renault with its own PUR. If Red Bull have to go back to being a customer team heading into new regulations in 2022, just how damaging could that be with a last minute change heading into new regs and not having that? kind of synergy? Uh, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I think they, you know, whether whether there was, however, I guess the, the relationship um, ended last time, you know, with, with Red Bull and Renault, the, the fact was, you know, Red Bull was still winning at times, certainly winning races with with Renault uh, in the back of the car and obviously the, the championships um, were with Renault. So, I think at the end of the day, if, if they're uh, if they're building a good car and you know they're they're going to get obviously support um, and uh, they'll still have a chance to, to do that. So yeah, I don't uh, unless I'm missing something really obvious or with with the rules. I know you mentioned 2022, but I haven't really thought that far ahead yet. But uh, going by the past and the history and at least my experience there, uh, I don't I don't foresee any anything uh, they should be concerned about. How confident are you that you'll be able to uh, remain with the team next year as this, obviously, the, the wait for them to decide goes on? Um, <clears throat> and do you have a sort of personal deadline by which you would like to have everything firmed up? I don't really have many, uh, you know, it's hard to, hard to know what, what, what the outcome would be. Um, and it wouldn't be helpful to sit here and, and tell you guys a deadline and, and put pressure on, on the whole situation um, like that. So. You know, I'm, I'm um, taking it day by day, and then you know, focusing on on my racing while uh, while I wait for my future to uh, un unfold. Thank you, Roman. Please. Yeah, I guess you know I've been in a situation many times, and uh, it's part of the world we live in. And uh, always, the earlier the better, then you know your future. But um, I think you know the maths are quite easy, and there aren't that many seats left so 
in that aspect, it makes it that there's a little bit less speculation and um, also, you know, looking at other options as well outside of, of F1 uh, to see what could be really tempting. So I guess we will know soon enough for everyone. And, and so luckily we don't have to answer that question anymore in the future. Under Formula One's new rules for next year, all the teams you beat this year will be able to do more aerodynamic development for 2022. What do you think of this rule, particularly given that, Carlos, you are moving to a team, Ferrari, which stands to gain more from this rule? Uh, it's a difficult question to answer because I don't know exactly how much the wind tunnel regulations work if you finish third, fourth or fifth. But uh, I do fully support the new regulations of trying to converge the grid and trying to make sure that the teams come closer together. Um, I think it's the right direction for Formula One and uh, whatever it happens with this year results, independently if they have an impact or not in 2021, I think it's, it's the right direction for Formula One and the more of that the better because the, the most fun the races will be and the more the driver will count instead of the machinery that now counts too much. Thank you. Lando? <laughs> <laughs> if it's clear enough. Um, I mean, I support it, obviously. Um, you know, two, three years ago, this is all McLaren would have wanted. But uh, I think it's, it's good to show that we're in a position where maybe it doesn't suit us as much as others. Um, but, I don't know, I don't think it changed too much. As I think for now, and our current objective is to still try and maintain the, the constructors' position we're in. Um, but it's, you know, it's like the drivers' championship for me. I think we can have one weekend, we could have this weekend, and if it's another very tough result, it can swing very quickly the opposite way. So, I don't know. I don't think we're thinking about that. We're we're doing the best we can to maintain our position and score the most points between both drivers. Yeah, question for George, please. Uh, coming back to the conditions, in a position you're going to probably be in over this weekend with really low temperatures. What tools are actually available setup-wise, tyre prep-wise and driving-wise to kind of overcome that? And is there just a, a temperature basement where there's just nothing you can do? You don't have the weapons to get the tyres the switched on and are we at risk of being in that situation this weekend? I think you're going to have to be pretty aggressive with your driving. Um, there are a few things you can do with the car to try and induce more temperature into the tyres, whether that's with camber, toes, uh, the brake ducts and the nozzles to try and put more heat into into the tyres um, is going to be difficult. There's no silver bullet to just suddenly generate that tyre temperature without any major knock-on effects because, like I say, I don't think any Formula 1 team or Pirelli designed tyres to be driven around in 7 degrees uh, of, of temperature. So it's going to be tricky, but I think that's going to lend opportunity to, to us to try and capitalise and um, let's see this this race weekend as a, a chance to yeah, take take this opportunity. Just on face value, the, let's say if we have a, a dry weekend, which is maybe not looking like it because obviously with the way the conditions are looking right now, anything could happen. It's definitely going to be a challenge uh, either way. But, uh, you know, if, if things go kind of smooth, uh, dry conditions, you know, I think it is a track that will suit us more than especially coming off the back of Sochi. Uh, so on paper, it should be a bit better for us. Um, kind of as, as George said earlier, you know, the past few races, we've been putting more of an emphasis on trying to be more competitive on uh, on Sundays as the potential has, has always been there in the car on Saturdays. Um, so I think that's really going to be the main thing, seeing if we could get the Sunday performance off the back of hopefully what is what is a strong qualifying so uh, yeah I'm quite excited